Hey guys, Eris here. We're back here to give another video for you guys. This one's about my Twisted Blades Rogue Seasonal build. It is pretty cool. A lot of people have been asking me how do I build this, etc. So I'm going to get into the details for you guys. Break it down. Let's get into it. <clears throat> So with Rogue, I do fundamental uh, puncture. The reason why being is because you get the vulnerability pretty basic. You just constantly auto attack to get your uh, vulnerability. And then for the Twisted Blades, I go all the way to the side improved Twisted Blades. The reason why being is because you get the enemies that are dazed are with impaled twisted blades. So you get that dazed effect. So you get more damage from dazed enemies as a FX on your gear. I do sturdy because you get uh, damage reduction to close enemies. I do siphoning strikes because you get a lifesteal attack with lucky hit. Um, I go down here to shadow step because this is a way to get out with uh, an unstoppable movement. So if you ever get stunned, CC'd, you immediately get out of there with your, with your shadow step. And I also use dash here. Dash is because it's very fast and efficient to dive to the back walls of your enemies. I also use discipline shadow step. I forgot to add that. The cooldown is reduced by three seconds when it damages an enemy you have not hit with shadow step in the last four seconds. So this pretty much you get shadow step very, 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 very fast if you use it on other mobs that you haven't used it on in the past four seconds. So you just constantly have it up. I use discipline again for this, the, the, the slows. You get more uh, dazed and slow CC, so you just dive through packs of mobs, it slows them all. I use weapon mastery as well here, you gain a bonus when attacking with the base weapon type. I also have three from item contributions, so this goes literally a massive damage increase, it's insane. So I use concussion because you knock back or knocking down an enemy, you gain 12% critical strikes, which is why we use trick attacks as well, because when you critical strike a dazed enemy, you knock them down for 0.5 seconds. And we obviously will go back to here, where you use your dash through the enemies. They're all dazed and slowed, so you'll be knocking them down continuously. Your evade cooldown is reduced by one second when you daze an enemy as well, so... With that being said, when you double dash through your enemies, you have a slowed, then dazed, and literally you get all your agilities back up, and you could do it over and over again with your shadow imbuements. It's very explosive damage if you want to, you know, just dive through mobs and kill them. A exploit here, we use this. Everyone really knows what this is, but I'm going to get into the details with you. You deal and increase the damage to healthy and injured enemies. Healthy characters have more than 80% of the life. Injured characters have less than 35% of the life. So you're constantly almost always doing more damage. This is another thing you could do for item contribution from your ambulance instead of weapon mastery if you cannot find weapon mastery. This one is another replacement for that as well. Malice, you deal seven, a 9% increased damage to vulnerable enemies. We are always trying to get everyone vulnerable in your fights. This is a very important. Shadow uh, Crash, we'll get into this. So the lucky hit shadow damage has up to 10% to stun the enemy for 0.53 seconds. So half a second stun when you get them with the shadow imbuement. Each time you kill an enemy with shadow damage, you generate 20 energy. This is very, 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 very important to do for your shadow imbuement builds. The reason why being is because you constantly have uh, energy regenerating. So you can constantly have sustainability for your Twisted Blades attack. So you don't have to use as much puncture to get them vulnerable. I go into shadow imbuement here uh i have four item contributions from the helmet as well which gives you massive damage increase enhanced shadow imbuement and bled blended shadow imbuement shadow imbuement primary explosives make enemy vulnerable for two seconds this is where you get a massive aoe vulnerable damage kind of like when the poison trap you do you get them all vulnerable from that instead you do shadow imbuement replace your traps because honestly traps are going to be pretty bad until patch 1.11 comes out and then i think the poison ticks on the shadow uh the the poison traps are going to be absolutely insane poison imbuement here uh, we go to, we only put one in here just as to have it for the single target boss damage, of course. Uh, blended poison imbuement critical strikes with poison imbued skills have a 70% increased poison damage. Massive damage explosive right there with those. Um, innervation here, uh, lucky hit up to 30% chance to gain 8 energy, which this is another thing with sustainability along with your consuming shadows. 
Very important for sustainability to have constant energy regeneration. Adrenaline rush, while moving, you gain 5% increased energy regeneration, more sustainability with energy, so you want to constantly be moving, constantly dashing, constantly avoiding, because when you stay still anyways, you all know those pesky little, little freaking bees that shoot poison uh, bees at you, just annihilate you, or you have the burning death crossbows from off the screen that hits you for a half of your HP, you know, very frustrating stuff there. Haste, while at or above 50% energy, you gain 15% movement speed, while uh, below you 50% uh, maximum energy, you gain 15% attack speed. So this is another thing for sustainability because most of the time when you want uh, to be moving, you'll want to be above 50% energy because you'll constantly be regenerating it from moving here. And when you don't have it, you get attack speed to regenerate it from the uh, consuming shadows and the innervation. So in, in, in my opinion, those are like your biggest sustainabilities over here in these branches here and consuming shadows is how you get your constant energy flow for your, uh, your rogue. And of course we go with momentum because you know, when you have three stacks of momentum, you gain 20% damage reduction, 30% increase uh, energy regeneration and 15% movement speed. It's absolutely insane and just massive. And you get, uh, um, movement stacks from or momentum stacks from stunning and dazing or frozen enemies when hitting them or hitting any enemy from behind. So when you shadow step as well, you will constantly have momentum up because you're constantly dazing with your dashes. You're constantly behind people. You're freezing people with your uh, pendant graves. We'll get into the, that, that detail right now. I will be uh, going into details about the Paragon here when I'm finished in level 100 for you guys. So you have a finished actually Paragon board. But for now, this is the gist it really isn't like something super nice or super massive i haven't mid maxed it i haven't really like looked super deep into this yet but for as it is for le for a le leveling uh route this is a very fast efficient way to be leveling with i really enjoy what i'm doing so far i have a lot of damage increase and a lot of um sustainability with damage reduction as well but for the first three ones we do exploit weakness we put closer into the first one um and then we do exploit glyph here on the cheap shot one for now i think i'm going to replace the exploit one here soon but this is for vulnerable damage ex extra right now because the only one i've been leveling besides these two trying to get everything level 15 but yeah that's the paragon points for right now we do specialization inner sight the reason why being is because inner sight you have a constant four second flow of just infinite energy you could just spam your twisted blades as much as possible dive to the farthest enemy do massive damage and now we're going to get into aspects here for you guys so with aspects this is going to be uh defensive here we're going to go for the effects of cooldown reduction shadow uh imbuement total armor and dexterity is what i got for this preferably you might maybe want maximum life instead of dexterity depending on if you want the survivability for your hardcore players or if you want damage for your softcore players um for the armor here you're going to want obviously as much damage reduction as possible you can get i i got lucky i got damage uh, from close damage to distance enemies i got total armor and maximum life this is a pretty solid chest overall in my opinion um and we use barrier here because we have mm, like 4900 constant extra life that can be you know re rejuvenated without having to pop potions and just kill an elite there you go i am currently using grabs for shadows because this is something i found at level 50 as i am level 705 i upgraded it to 725 which gave me the ancestral effects instead of having a sacred effects it gives me the 15 percent attack speed instead of the normal i think it's 12 percent with the sacred and stuff like that so i upgraded these they're pretty much ancestral i get three ranks of all core straight uh, skills I know currently I need to find a Twisted Blades one that you can get four Twisted Blades to, and I could throw on um, Exploit onto there for more damage while you have a barrier. Um, cheats Warlords. Uh, we use the cheat here because you take less damage from crowd control enemies whenever your crowd control enemy deals direct damage to you, and you gain 50% movement speed for two seconds. So movement speed, again, is very important for a rogue because you are very squishy. You cannot be standing still, and when you do move, you get constant re energy regeneration, so very important to stay there. And these are the bread and butter to every build when it comes to a rogue because this makes it to where you can run away from any type of creature and, or any type of monster, including the butcher. You cannot run him very easy, very efficiently with these. I have 24% increased movement speed here. And then when you dash, you get 75% or when you evade, you get 75% movement speed increased. Very solid. 
every rook should have these in their build um blade dancer piercing uh wind crossbow i use twisted blades here obviously because i'm using a twisted blades build you put it on the crossbow two-handed weapon because you get more efficient stat increase it doubles the stat increase for your aspects here with double handed weapons or kind of how it does a little bit of an increase for your amulet as well um you want to go for critical strike damage vulnerable damage uh core skill damage and probably dexterity i would say or all stats um and the reason why i don't i only am i have basic skill damage and critical strike damage with imbued skills is because it's all i could find and get together right now and this is the best i can find so instead of the critical strike damage i have with imbued skills because i'm constantly having imbuements up anyways so it's like the same thing the basic skill damage is like and eh, whatever you know i'm not gonna change that because the dexterity was uh overpower damage and we don't use overpower damage so i just re-rolled that to dexterity and of course uh i forgot to go into gyms here with you guys we use uh topaz Later on, past level 65, we put in Topaz because I find Topaz is more efficient later on because you have like more controlled and paired all the time to you. So you just take less damage instead of having that basic life because when you're in like tier two and tier one, there's less like mob density with like triple effect elites and stuff. As in like when you go to tier three and tier four, you'll be using Topaz instead of uh, rubies. But when you're below tier three and below tier four, you'll be using rubies. And with your weapons, you'll always want to use critical strike damage to vulnerable enemies because everything you're doing is wanting to be critted and you're going to be having everybody vulnerable around you so this is this massive damage increase for every single weapon um and you put edge masters on your next sword and then you're going to want to do the same exact effects as you're going to want for your bow here you're going to want core uh skill damage you're going to want critical strike damage you're going to want vulnerable damage and you're going to want dexterity or all stats we use the edge masters here because uh increases base damage on your primary resource when you cast and honestly in my opinion with this build you're continuously always up to 100 percent energy so you shouldn't have to worry about that um and this is we use accelerating everyone knows why because you get massive attack speed increase when you're using your core skills and you should be continuously and always using your core score skills so this basically gives you 20 percent attack speed overall it's massive huge damage increase um, and like, like, like the rest of the weapons, you want vulnerable damage, you want core skill damage, you want dexterity, and you want critical strike damage. Um, and for your rings here, your effects and your stat priorities are critical strike damage, critical strike chance, um, vulnerable damage, and maximum life. Those are like the four you want. Maximum life is very, very, very important for like survivability. So if you're like doing those higher tier pushes, yes. But if you want to do more damage at a, at a leveling rate, you could use imbuement skill damage. You could do do, um damage to close enemies they're all very good all very efficient and uh you're gonna want to do this is corruption your imbuement skills have a 32 percent a 20 to 40 percent increased potency against vulnerable enemies everyone around you realistically should be vulnerable so this is a 32 percent increase in damage with your imbued skills only but you should always have up continuously and then your uh you'll use vengeful here making enemy vulnerable has up to 48 percent chance to grant three percent increased critical strike so when you're always making people vulnerable you have a lucky hit on chance to get more percent of critical strike up to nine percent during a battle and uh i forgot that we're gonna go into malignant hearts here in a second as well but the same as this one you're gonna want critical strike damage critical strike chance vulnerable damage and maximum life um the mangler here this is kind of like up in the water here this is something i just put temporarily i probably would be changing this aspect but it is good for temporary dealing direct damage to a vulnerable enemy has up to 62 percent chance to daze them for two seconds so the reason why i have this is because as you know we'd be dazing everybody with our dashes and we'd be making everybody vulnerable and we have more damage to daze enemies so this is an overall good place holder for an aspect until you find something that's more useful that's my opinion and for the uh amulet here i've only found the sacred so far with the weapon masteries of three um and i'm looking for one currently so if you guys have any for sale or you want to hook me up and get me one type in the comments below you know your boy is always looking for an ancestral with decent effects but you want damage reduction from close enemies weapon masteries total armor and maximum and movement speed you want movement speed not maximum life you want movement speed and total arm and damage reduction from close enemies and weapon mastery those are the four you want there Okay, that's enough with the aspects guys let's go into the malignant hearts these currently are not like set in stone i'd say best in slot i use the five sun grenade ones because it helps stun enemies for five seconds gives you cc because currently right now when i go in the dungeons i'm not going into anything that's 
below 10 levels or higher than me. So I'm always fighting something like I'm, I'm 76. I'm always fighting something that's 86 or higher because that's like my power level. I just absolutely destroy dungeons and flow through them like it's nothing. I will be giving you guys gameplay after this as well. It will be at the end of the video. So stay tuned or you guys can uh, skip to the section where it says gameplay that right there below. And I will be asking you guys kindly and please, if you guys could like and subscribe to the channel, it helps out the channel a lot as in 92% of you guys are not currently subscribed that are watching my videos and let's get back into it. I use the raffle heart of the barber. Everyone knows what this is. It's a very good heart, but in my opinion, it's kind of tricky or weird with the rogue right now because it doesn't do vulnerable damage increase. So that's a big increase where your damage comes from. But in my opinion, the explosion from the AOE with your shadow imbuement, it, just, it, it pays off for it. But I think they're going to be fixing that in PAX 1.11. They'll be hot fixing this and it should be better for the rogues. And um, for this one, the vicious heart we have here, critical strikes, electrically charged enemy for 3.9 seconds, causing lightning arcs in between them or any other charged enemies dealing 466 damage. This is good overall just for extra little damage things obviously i think there is better out there in my opinion so like right here if i wouldn't have put the barber in this raffle heart i would take the raffle heart drop it in there i put the barber in there and then i would take there's a flame shield one that does massive damage around your character when you do some effects with the raffle heart um or this one as well when you use a uh, subterfuge skill when you're using actually like a trap you'll have a decoy that explodes ma massive damage as well <clears throat> but that is pretty much the gist of my rogue build tell me tell me what you guys think below and uh you know I appreciate you guys for watching, and as always, you guys have a good one, good vibe tribe, peace.